On this edition of InCycle, how to recover from a fractured hip with Ashley Moorman Passio. With a career such as professional cycling, where there's so much that's sort of left to chance, you know, um, there's so many uncontrollables. With the Giro d'Italia approaching, there's a look at Vincenzo Nibali's TT bike. Aerodynamic is not visible, something you can't touch. You need something, uh, let's say, to believe the story. And the wind tunnel is the right tool to measure. But first, we're off to Slovakia to see what the Velets brothers are doing away from the peloton. You suffer on a bike, but also you suffer in a business. Then you, then you really you, you achieve something on your bike, and you can the same you can achieve, and you have almost the same satisfaction in a, in a, in a business wise. I'm Martin Velitz, and I'm a professional rider for Quick Step Floors uh, this year, and uh, I'm fo founder of uh, of a cycling clothing brand Isador. Hi, I'm Peter Velitz. Uh, I'm an ex-professional rider. I stopped uh, last year with the uh, with the uh, with the BMC, uh, and uh, I'm also a founder of uh, Isador Apparel, which which I'm working on 100% now. We have the cycling career, but uh, we should we should be challenging ourselves a little bit more with something else, you know, outside of the bubble of a, of a cycling life, a professional cycling life. We be riding in a cycling clothing already for 15 years, so that's the, that's the one experience we can really use, you know. And uh, so let's uh, let's try to do something about this. We wanted to start in Slovakia, of course. Like this is our, our, our homeland. We we live here for for our lives, and uh, we were like, okay, it's gonna be Slovak brand. We we making it actually local. It's here in our in our hometown. You know, in a small twenty thousand people uh, town, which is a which is a textile factory or manufacturer, which which has a history of more than fifty years now. And there is like 200 or 300 people which have this skill of of pure craftsmanship. What they what they do almost for their whole life, and they they really can work the the, the fabrics and textile. So you have this you have this somehow this connection of these two worlds of the big big world of all the big suppliers of all the big technology coming to a small town. In most of our tops, we work with uh, with the merino wool, which is which is uh, natural material. Again, like sustainable and really soft and really well performing on the tops. Most of our bib shorts, they have cold black uh, shower treatment, which uh, helps keep the keep what is underneath the, the, the bibs uh, colder on a really hot uh, sunny day. Then you have all kind of other different treatments that you can use and, and we are also using like water repellent or uh, uh, fast drying or uh, antibacterial. So this is, this is again a thing where we're not really looking into how much it's going to cost and how much it's going to cost at the end the product, but this is what we're looking like, what is the benefit of it. and. If me or Peter would like the benefit at the end, then we, we go for that. The only clothing I'm riding is Isador now, of course. So I can really feel the difference. When you get the team clothing, it has some purpose. Why you get this clothing? It should be aerodynamic, it should be light, it should be breathable and all this stuff. And But of course, to, to achieve this aerodynamics, uh, then you really have to tie, you have to tie it. You have to be really, really almost like you take a breath and close it sometimes and this is what I was not really I was not such a big fan of this you know and now when you can put the clothing on which which still fits pretty well but your breathing is is normal I would say then you really you feel the difference I can finally put on clothing which I will feeling just just free almost I would say and then uh, then uh, now I can really enjoy the, the, the ride on a bike to put it the easiest way we don't do anything that me or Peter wouldn't like you know, 
So that's what that's what I think that's that's the most and the authentic thing uh, about us. As a four-time Grand Tour winner, few riders are as used to overcoming challenges as Vincenzo Nibali. Now the star attraction of the entirely new Bahrain Merida team, such challenges have been plentiful. Ma le, le impressioni sono abbastanza buone anche se essendo una nuova squadra ci sono tanti aspetti che bisogna migliorare e, e bisogna andare di passo un passo alla volta per cercare di di raggiungere il livello che comunque ci aspettiamo. One of the most important steps for the Sicilian has been familiarizing himself with the team's Merida bikes. As Nibali continues his preparations for a defense of his Giro d'Italia crown, InCycle were recently invited along to see an important step in his countdown to the Corsa Rosa as he headed to the wind tunnel to perfect his aerodynamic efficiency with the help of Merida's specialists. Ogni anno ci sono sempre delle innovazioni per quanto riguardano i telai, le bici, i manubri, le ruote, quindi eh, ognuna di queste fa sì che aumentare le prestazioni e di migliorare sempre di più eh, per, per cercare di raggiungere svariati successi. Ecco, anche con le bici da crono ormai i distacchi sono veramente molto importanti e quindi bisogna cercare di avere delle bici soprattutto molto performanti ecco. Because aerodynamic is not visible, something you can't touch, you need something uh, let's say to believe the story and the wind tunnel is the right tool to measure and to give uh, data black on white where you can show the rider in this situation with 45 km per hour I save 5, 8, 10 watt and every rider exactly understands what this means. While the study of aerodynamic impact on cycling performance is nothing new, the potential rewards from positional improvement remain high. And whilst in the past primary focus had been on time trial performance, now regular road riding is receiving just as much attention. Aerodynamic drag is the biggest resistance a rider has to overcome. It is the biggest uh, area of potential improvement in pro racing, not just for TT, but as well for regular road ride uh, applications. And therefore, we need uh, to sit the rider as aerodynamic as possible on the bike, because if you have the total package of bike and rider, the rider is uh, close to 70% of the total aerodynamic resistance. For those trying to get the most out of man and machine, the desire to push for maximum aerodynamic efficiency is strong. But with hours on the bike in store for any road racer, wind tunnel testing has to involve a balancing act between performance gain and rider comfort. The main thing is to convince riders about uh, what we are doing and to have as well sensations that if the figures show that a further improvement is possible, but you can see the rider's resistance because the position doesn't feel convenient, it's as well necessary to get uh, the right sensation uh, to make sure that the riders later on will as well use this position. It's uh, a kind of combination of uh, science and uh, at the other hand of being a kind of motivator as well. A rider of Nibali's caliber knows full well the value of taking time to go through such a process. Through the team's work in the wind tunnel, Nibali is gaining a better understanding of which bike will help him best in certain situations. Ma è ovvio che eh, nel, nel ciclismo di oggi è molto importante avere più bici perché i produttori ci mettono sempre di più a disposizione dei nuovi telai, eh, ovvero abbiamo il telaio da salita che è la scultura, abbiamo la reacto per le tappe di pianure per i velocisti e poi abbiamo il telaio da cronometro che è la VARP eh, per, le, per le prove contro il tempo. E queste qui fanno sì che avere diverse prestazioni in ogni ambito. And with Nibali's ambitions for the year, he will at least be well equipped to defend his Giro title. Actually, all top-level bikes of the top brands work on a, let's say, very, very high competitive level. And uh, the main thing is finally to convince riders as well to use the right product out of the portfolio, matching best to their riding style. 
and for a GC leader, and that's what uh, Vincenzo is, he's not just our uh, captain of the whole team, he's as well our biggest uh, hope for the GC. Uh, it's as well our obligation to give him the most efficient tool. It's uh, simply uh, the tool which helps him potentially to win the new uh, Giro d'Italia or the next other Grand Tours. I crashed um, during the Chrono Destinations time trial. It had been a long season, miserable weather. I was setting a really fast time. I was on my way to win. I suddenly saw a whole lot of commotion. Another rider had crashed before me. There was a police motorbike that had parked in the roundabout. I tried to slow down, but in the wet weather, when your wheels are already at an angle, you don't stand much of a chance. I slid out and came to a rest by hitting the motorbike. The adrenaline is just going and I got up and I tried to put pressure on the pedal. I actually heard this like Then I knew I had broken something in my pelvis. A French doctor said to me, a month completely off the leg um, and then three months off the bike. I think one underestimates the power of the mind. The most important thing like with a career such as professional cycling where there's so much that's sort of left to chance, you know, um, there's so many uncontrollables. I think the most important thing is just to kind of em embrace the process. You know, when you try to resist things, it just makes it that much harder. In the past actually, um, many years ago, I, I sustained a near fatal head injury. Um, even in the first year that I tried to go pro, <laughs> I broke my collarbone three times in the space of 12 months. So this is nothing new. What do you do when you break your hip? Yes. <laughs> Sit and relax. No, it becomes very frustrating doing nothing. Initially, the pain was incredibly bad and I couldn't even imagine how I would sit up again by myself. That's how sore it was. You know, I wasn't crying or, or screaming. I just knew something had happened. And I suppose it's just that uncertainty of, you know, how bad is it that can be a little bit daunting. It is sort of that thought, I hope that everything's okay and that this isn't going to be career ending because it is very possible. I was actually quite lucky to land up with a doctor um, that understood um, the need to kind of get going as quickly as possible. So he actually took the, a less conservative approach and encouraged me to start putting a bit of weight on it already at two weeks, which I think was saving grace. I was also encouraged to, to get into the pool. And then I could start using pain as the guide as to how much I could do. As a cyclist, I think that's always the hardest thing. You know, we, we learn how to push through the pain barrier and, um, and then to learn sometimes just to listen to your body and to, to listen to the pain and, and to stop, I think that can also be hard. That could also eventually get onto the indoor trainer. At first it was just absolutely no power at all, just um, no resistance just spinning the legs, seeing how that's feeling. And every day, like, I just felt there was a, a little bit of progression, you know, and I could push it a little bit more. We're not messing around. Yeah, no, we're doing it proper. <laughs> Carl, my husband, plays a, a really big role in my cycling career. Starting the training again, it's comforting to have someone with you. Um, who really cares for you. So it's a team effort and that's how we kind of approach everything. 
I did take a slightly riskier approach. You know, the doctors wanted me to be on the indoor trainer much longer than what I ended up staying on the indoor trainer. Um, you know, I, I was careful, you know, it's about calculated risk, I suppose. I just kind of came to the sort of mindset that, you know, if I just spend all this time on an indoor trainer, I'm going to kill all the motivation that I've built up, you know. So by being injured and being forced to take that rest, which I think in a way was a little bit of a blessing in disguise because I, I'd spent sort of seven years um, going full gas, being a rider from, from the Southern Hemisphere, your season doesn't just end in Europe. Getting back on the bike and on the road was just such an amazing feeling. Um, but in the same breath, you know, it was also just that kind of nervousness, like, I don't want to set myself back. Yeah, I remember my first ride and I just felt like, wow, I love my bike, you know? So I think that was also great, you know, that renewed motivation and love for just being out in the fresh air on my bike. There were times where I had to back off, you know, um, when I started to do, to try and do more power intervals because I, I felt pain or I felt um, that the back was compensating. Some of the muscles need to kind of catch a little bit of a wake up <laughs> because they switched off. So there has been times like once or twice on the bike where I actually felt like, ah, 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 that might actually like cramp or I don't know what, like that kind of sensation like. Your lower back, how's that been? So that's been giving a little bit of, of trouble if I'm climbing a lot. Okay, fair enough. Realistically, that hip is never going to heal in anything less than six weeks. Pain needs to be your guide. We're so hard on ourselves as athletes. We never really want to take rest. And whenever you rest, you feel guilty for it. So I had to rest. At the end of the day, the training is only the potential to become stronger. But rest is what makes you stronger. How do you lift me to your chest? So just balance on that good leg. You're welcome to. Not really a good leg, okay. And down. Well, it's going to have to get good. Yeah, exactly. Other side. I'm really lucky to be much further ahead than what I thought I would be. Um, so, you know, if I take myself back to lying in the hospital bed and being told three months off the bike, we've just passed three months. Give her advice, Ashley. It's important. Give her advice. Huh? Having a leadership role with a lot of younger riders definitely was a great distraction. We knew we had a great group of girls together and we knew we had a lot of potential. But just from the word go, um, things just clicked. And I think it's also um, an attribute to, to strong leadership to show um, the youngsters that it's just as rewarding to be part of a victory as it is to win yourself injury could be a blessing in disguise. It's helped with my motivation, it's helped me to realize sort of new things. I've maybe learned to just go with the flow and be in the moment. Race decisions are decisions that have to be made in split seconds and I think that that could help me to be a more relaxed rider. So yeah, I'm feeling confident for the season going ahead and as I said, new mindset. I think starting with Strada Bianchi was, um, you know, kind of throwing myself into the deep end. Um, I obviously, you know, I was nervous about the nature of the race, I suppose, and, and so the fact that a lot of off-road, a lot of climbing. I suppose that was a real sort of sign that there was still some work to be done in terms of recovery. It was a little bit of a shock to, to the system for me. Um, I was happy because I wasn't far off, you know, I, I literally just missed um, you know, going with the breakaway. I was right there. My back definitely took strain, so the, so the right side of my body definitely locked up as a result. I knew I had the legs, more or less, but um, the body just wasn't kind of responding the way I wanted it to. I do have to still um, be really on top of, of the physio work. Um, I'm very, very dependent on that, and you know, I suppose I will be for a while, um, but things are improving with every race. To have had quite a good um, rehab or recovery, there was almost um, sort of a sense that maybe I could start it, uh, you know, performing even earlier in the year. So I suppose that's been a little bit difficult to sort of balance that expectation that, hey, remember, I know I'm, I'm looking good and, I'm, and I've, I've recovered really well, but remember, it wasn't a small injury, you know. If I didn't get results in those events, I knew I was achieving something else, you know, I was getting stronger or I was 
you know, um, accelerating sort of um, the build of my form. It's been great to have a supportive role, to be able to see a youngster like Cicely take that step and, and be on the podium with a young rider jersey was really great. Even before the race, we could all see that, that Lotte was com completely focused on the win, but also just super relaxed about it. Um, and yeah, it was great. There were times actually in the race where, you know, Lotte is really takes a lot of responsibility on her shoulders as well. So she's really a rider that's also always um, in the front. And there were actually times in the race where I had to just say to her, Lotte, just relax, you know. You need to remember, you, you want to go for the sprint, so um, don't waste energy. And um, yeah, I mean, she just delivered perfectly on the day. And it was, it was really, really a great um, victory for the team. I was actually, I suppose, again, a little bit nervous of, of Flanders. Um, not because of the climbs um, and the sort of difficult nature of the course, but more because of the, the distance. So to be 100% honest, like I said to you, I, I do feel that I, I lacked some of the build-up that a lot of the girls had, um, you know, to ensure I had a good base. But yeah, Flanders was really, um, yeah, it was, it, it was a good boost for my confidence, I suppose, because I think it's the first race really this season where I've started to feel like I'm coming back to my old self, you know, and to be at the front on the climbs and to be able to follow those moves, um, you know, quite, e with, not, not with ease, but, you know, um, to feel comfortable doing that. My first real sort of goal for the season is to, to target the Ardennes Classics. In the past few weeks, I've definitely started to see the old numbers back again on the power. You're constantly wanting to find ways of improving and um, it's not necessarily always through training. Sometimes it's a change in mindsets. I just have sort of a new freedom in the peloton where it's, it's quite liberating. I suppose the injury has almost been um, instrumental in actually really enjoying the racing, but I'm a race winner and um, that's in my blood. I want to win. That's all for this week. Join us next time on InCycle. But until then, keep up to date with us across social media.